Hello poets! Today we're going to learn how to write a singhane poem, and a singhane poem is a structured five-line poem that does not rhyme. And just before we look at it in a little more detail, we're going to zoom in so that we can see the screen a little easier and click on the text boxes. So we go to view, we click on zoom, and then I usually like 100%. Once we've got that zoomed in, we can scroll up a little bit, and now we can see the pattern of the poem and an example of a completed poem. So this week, our job is to write two singing poems, one with theme of a person and one with the theme of an animal. So for our purposes right now, I'm going to write a poem about an animal to show you what it could look like. So the first line needs to be a noun. And a noun, like we've talked about, is a person, place, or thing. So I want my poem to be about my family's dog, whose name is LJ. The next line needs to be two adjectives. And adjectives are describing words. So to describe LJ, I'm going to say that he is fluffy and playful. And when you're writing lines of poetry, you can separate your words if they're in a list using commas. And then poetry also doesn't follow the same, same rules as writing regular sentences. So I don't need a capital at the start. My next line needs to have three ing verbs and verbs are action words. So I'm gonna say that LJ likes running, jumping and playing. So I've got my commas separating my list of words, and then I also have this capital at the beginning that I can get rid of. The next line is a phrase, and a phrase is just a small group of words that's going to describe or relate to my topic. So for LJ, I'm going to say that he's always looking for trouble. I can get rid of my capital there. And you'll notice in this line that I don't have my commas, and that's because I'm not making a list. I'm just putting a few words together to describe LJ, but it's more like a sentence for this line, not just a list of a bunch of words. My last line is a noun synonym. So it has to be a noun related to my topic, but it can't be the same one that I used at the start. It has to be a synonym, and a synonym is another word that has the same meaning, but is not the exact same word. And then again, a noun is a person, place, or thing, so it has to follow that rule as well. So for LJ, because he is a dog, I'm going to put dog for my last line. And then I would be done my sinking poem about an animal. So this one reads, LJ, fluffy, playful, running, jumping, playing, always looking for trouble, dog. So just to summarize what your job is this week, you need to write two sinking poems, one about a person and one about an animal of your choice. You're not to copy the one that I wrote, it's just an example to give you an idea of what it could sound like. I do have a second page here, so to toggle between pages in PowerPoint, you just click if you want to open a different one. And this one is optional, so if you're having fun writing the sinking poems, you can write another couple poems here. And to edit these pages, you just click on the box until your cursor shows up, and then you'll be able to write in there. If you accidentally delete one of the text boxes, you can go to home and use the back arrow to fix that mistake. At the top of this optional page, it does give you some examples of other ideas for more poems, or you can come up with your own. So I'm very excited to see what you come up with. When you're done, don't forget to close out of your page and then click turn in on the assignment. Good luck.